put it on the far end of Winston campus uh, over there by the Weimar building, nursing, pharmacy. But when they got to thinking about it, the type of research that they do in this building is more connected to engineering, which is right over there, the biotech, which is over there, biochemistry over there, and horticulture over there. So this location made a lot more sense as far as getting different people from the different departments all congregated into this building. So this used to be the site of the old UW Health. It was an old, old building that was in pretty tough shape, so they tore that down and built this in the place. Um, when the building was being built, uh, the construction that they did is uh, two different types. Uh, the uh, north side of the building here, which is the labs on all floors, uh, was a concrete construction. So it takes much longer to build. Uh, it's a lot more costly to build, but because of the labs, they wanted the rigidity, and then also with the uh, fire hazards, uh, it would be safer with a concrete construction. This side of the building is all steel construction, so again, it went up much faster, it was a little bit cheaper, uh, and more uh, economical to uh, the event that the building would eventually go away. Uh, this side of the building would be more recyclable than, than that side of the building. So uh, that's the reason they built the way it did. This side was started first, and this side was then caught up with it, eventually uh, passed it, and then the site was finished. Um, the building was originally considered to be actually turned the other direction. The offices over on this side of the building here uh, have large windows in there, and they wanted to be able to look out over the beautiful lake that we have across the street. Uh, the problem was, though, is that this side of the building, being the labs, is actually just kind of a vertical straight up and down, not very aesthetically pleasing. It's also two stories higher than this side of the building, and that's where the mechanicals are and the stacks that are on top of the roof for the exhaust. And what happened is, is that up there at Enzyme, which is the uh, beige building up uh, on top of the hill there, you can see that square silver stack, that's their exhaust system. And what happened was is the neighborhood was having issues with noise uh, from the noisy exhaust. They were complaining about sometimes it would get fumes if the winds were coming in the right direction. So when this building was being planned, they thought, well, we don't want to go through all of that again. So basically what they did is they took the building and turned it 180 degrees. This side here is more terraced up uh, because it doesn't have the extra uh, height because of the penthouse. And so that's the reason we're uh, facing the direction that we are. Um, as far as the uh, other parts of the building, we are the Wisconsin Energy Institute, so they did a lot of things that uh, were uh, energy saving, and one of the things they did is the occupancy sensors. Uh, there's a little dome there above your head there, that's an occupancy sensor, and that does several uh, purposes. One of the things it does is say that somebody's in a particular area, so we have those sensors throughout the building, they're in the labs, the public spaces, and in the offices. So when somebody's in the area, it detects the movement and says, well, there's somebody here. So in the office, it changes the temperature. So there's a setback at night to save energy. So when you walk into your office, it says, well, somebody's here, so we better warm it up in the wintertime or cool it down in the summertime. Uh, the other thing that it does do is it also senses uh, the natural light. Uh, we've got a lot of windows in this building. Uh, this is considered an atrium, but we call it a light well because of all of the windows up above, the windows on the east end and the, on the west end. We've got windows in the labs on the north side and a lot of windows on the south side. So again, there's a lot of natural light that comes into this building. And so what the occupancy sensors do is they detect that amount of light and then adjust the fluorescence lights, the artificial lights, accordingly. So if you look, for instance, in this lab here, the fluorescent lights running down this row as they come into the center of the building, they're a little dimmer, they brighten in the middle, and then by the time they get to the far end, by the windows there, they're actually off. And the reason is, is because there's enough light still coming in this time of day that they don't need to need to be on. Uh, the group that will come here after, after you probably won't be able to see that it'll be dark enough outside that all the fluorescent lights will be on. So on um, this side of the building is all the offices, and so you can't see it right now, but there's a set of windows that are above ceiling level, and then right below that are the uh, windows that are actually for the office. Um, the office windows actually have blinds on them so that the occupants can, can uh, put them down if the uh, light is too bright coming in, but right those windows 
uh, as you can see right there, there's what's called a light wedge, a light shell. And so what it does is the light coming in is directed and reflected off of this light shelf. It's a uh, reflective material about two and a half, three feet wide, and it reflects the light off of there, off the ceiling, and that helps bring the light into the cubicle area here, so we have more natural light that way. Uh, one of the problems that we had uh, when we first moved into the building was the way that the offices were set up, the desks faced the doorway so that uh, your back is to the wall. And what was happening is, is that the sun would come in and you'd be working on your computer and the uh, light would actually uh, blank out your screen. You wouldn't be able to see it, it would flush it out. So the actors, what they would do is they'd take down and lower their blinds. Well, you can't lower the blinds, there's article blinds on the upper windows because it's for the light for the cubicle areas. So the occupancy said, saw that light, that natural light coming in, said, well, there's enough light, we don't need artificial light. They shut the lights off inside the office, so there you'd be sitting in the dark. So what they ended up doing after a lot of different trial and error, they decided, well, we'll just take and adjust the uh, fluorescent lights so they never go less than 50%. So there's still a good savings as far as uh, electrical use, but uh, you're not at least sitting in the dark. So, uh, one of the other things, uh, as far as the building goes, you can see the uh, curtain glass that goes around on top of all of these. They wanted this area to be more open, uh, and uh, so what they needed to do was put in the curtain glass there. And the reason for that is that if there ever becomes a fire inside the cubicle area, when the smoke goes up, instead of just coming up into the atrium area, uh, it will actually collect so that the uh, smoke detectors can, can see it. And so that was the reason for the uh, curtain glass around the uh, area here. One of the other issues that you have is when you have an atrium area like this, uh, by code you can never have more than two floors uh, that uh, open space without some sort of a barrier in case of an event of a fire. So you can see the uh, curtains there, they're actually horizontal fire shutters. And in the event of a fire, there's the beam detectors here, and the smoke would come up, and if it breaks more than one uh, beam detector, it'll actually set off the alarms, and these shutters will actually come across the atrium here, all the way to the bridge. So there'll be one up there, one down here, coming across, and the, likewise over on the west side of the building, there'll be two that come across and actually seal this building into three two-story levels. And again, that's to keep the fire from uh, going from floor to floor. Uh, one of the ways they could have avoided that is by using fireproof glass. Uh, these, instead of just being curtains then, these would be actually glass walls. These would be glass walls and would kind of be a claustrophobic area in here with, with all this glass. Uh, so they decided instead to do the, the fire shutters and the fire curtains. Likewise, behind you, the glass here, that could have been fire rated glass, but it's very expensive. So again, with that, in the event of a fire, there's actually vertical metal shutters that drop down like a garage door for all of these windows that are along this wall here on all of the floors. So again, if there's a fire on this side or that side, the shutters will shut and again contain, contain the fire. Uh, part of the air handling equipment that we'll talk about later, uh, our building is a lot different than some of the other buildings on campus, again, conserving energy. Uh, we have what's called chilled beam, and there's only about four or five buildings on campus that have it right now. We're in one, Wagner has it, Witt has it, Education Sciences, so some of the newer buildings. Uh, it's a lot more costly to put in and it's more costly to maintain, but there is an energy savings to it, and so that's why they decided to put it in our building. What you'll see up there in the grid of the ceiling is that two by four panel, and it's got perforated metal in the middle, and then it's got kind of air uh, drafts on either side, uh, air movers, and so what happens is in a traditional building you've got your offices or your lab space or your uh, cubicles, and generally what happens is you've just got a diffuser in the ceiling where the air comes from the air handling equipment and either cools in the summer or heats in the wintertime. It's just a, a bunch of air that supplies into that area. Well, it's a lot of wasted air because uh, with this system here, uh, there's actually a box up in the ceiling that's got a cooling coil in it, and so as the air comes down through the center, it actually draws air up through the levers on either side. It mixes inside of that box and then comes down through the center. So you're not replacing all the air in that uh, space all the time. 
you're actually using some of the air that's already been conditioned, the air in that space has already been heated, cooled, dehumidified, or humidified, and so rather than you know, replace it all with brand new air, it actually reuses some of that air again. So again, that's part of the energy savings. Uh, labs, however, are different. Uh, what happens in a lab is because of the uh, chemicals, because of fumes, because of the toxicity, the, the air that goes into a lab cannot be reused. It's got to be exhausted from the building. So the supply of air comes in, and then through general exhaust, uh, it is exhausted out, and then we have fume hoods on all of the floors. And the fume hoods are the biggest energy user of the labs uh, because of the open uh, chemicals that are inside. Uh, you've got to have a lot of air volume coming through to take out the fumes. Ours are a little bit more energy efficient than most on campus. Um, they actually have motion sensors in front of them so that if you have the sashes open and you're working on uh, some chemicals inside and you step away for a period of time, the motion sensor will say, uh, go into alarm and say, hey, you know, if you're done in here, make sure to shut the sashes because there's a lot of air that's being drawn out through this fume hood that if you're not going to be in front of it, using it, then uh, make sure and don't forget to shut the sash. Uh, with these labs here too, we do have a lot of minus 20 and a lot of minus 80 freezers for storing samples. And because of the cold temperatures of those freezers, they do give off a lot of heat. So rather than have them sporadically throughout the lab and heating up all the space, we have what's called, uh, I call them uh, freezer farms. So it's one large room that's on each of the lab floors and uh, all the minus 20s, all the minus 80s are actually stored in that one particular room. And then there's an actual cooling uh, device that's in there to help get rid of that some of that heat. So again, we're not trying to cool down the entire lab. We're just trying to keep that one particular space uh, Cool. Our uh, labs here are, are modular. Uh, you can see all of the wires and, and uh, gas supplies coming down from the ceiling panel. And again, so we do have some flexibility with uh, the lab benches. Uh, we can move them around a little bit uh, in order to make room for equipment uh, or whatever they're planning to do as far as research goes. So we do have some flexibility there. Each of the lab floors has a autoclave, uh, glass washers. Uh, the, uh, the experiment or the uh, researchers to use. There's also additional uh, snorkel uh, hookups or, or lab hookups. There's the stainless steel cylinders that you see dropping down from the ceiling. It's part of the building exhaust system so that if they have a particular uh, piece of equipment that needs extra exhaust, uh, we can open up those and attach the equipment to them. Uh, at each end of the building, uh, there's those little black or brown boxes. Uh, what there's in there are uh, heating tubes. Uh, heating water goes through there during the winter time. Uh, otherwise, what would happen is, is that the humidity on the inside of the building versus the cold air on the outside, the windows would frost up. So it's called washing the windows. Uh, it's just a warm water that goes through a, a series of fin tube. And basically, convection heat just draws it up uh, past the windows and uh, keeps them from frosting up. We'll have uh, conversation areas at uh, the east end. It's got a nice view and uh, a lot of times there'll be uh, lunch there. There are conversation areas if you want to get together. Uh, kitchens on each floor, small conference rooms on each floor. Uh, we're not really an academic building. It's more of a research building, so we don't have general classes here on a daily basis. And then down, we call it the eye route, but there's a one little wing that goes down on the uh, south the northeast side of the building here, and that's where the administration, the IT, uh, business services, and the uh, comms people live or work is in that area there. Uh, kind of a lot of itself. Any questions? Okay, uh, we'll do go to the uh, elevators and go down to the basement.